okay? Can you say and spell your first and last name? Uh, Jesse, J-E-S-S-E, -S -S -E, Baker, B-A-K-E-R. And I guess, what, what's your title? I'm the fire chief here at 356 Volunteer Fire Department. Okay, um, I guess first give me some background about this fire department. How long um, have y'all been here and, and what kinds of, you know, what are some of the fires you've recently been working on? Okay, well, the fire department was actually established in 1983. Uh, we're a small rural fire department. Uh, we were involved with the Bering Fire. Uh, we had trucks and people out there on that large wildfire uh, for several days. Uh, we did a, a we do structure fires, grass fire, we, you know, any kind. Uh, we're also a medical first responder organization here for the county. Uh, we respond to assist EMS with medical calls and stuff. We're the only actual, as far as I know, state certified first responder organization in this county. So uh, we will go just about anywhere for them. You, you, so some of your guys were helping with that, uh, the lake, uh, the search um, on the lake a couple months ago, isn't that Yes, right? yeah, they uh, were. When they were looking for that, that, that fisherman that fell off the boat? We've, uh, we've been involved in several uh, Search and, search and rescues on the lake. We've been involved, uh, you know, we get involved in just about anything to aid our community out here or any of the other uh, departments that might need help. But, you know, we're there for them too, just like they're there for us. And so, I mean, y'all have just, again, just, just coming off of this gigantic, overwhelming bearing fire um, and, and, and this happens. Tell me when, um, when the fire was noticed and, uh, you know, I guess describe how y'all had, uh, you know, what happened from there. Well, it was a passerby that noted the fire and called it in. Uh, of course, the sheriff's office attempted to page us out for the fire, but because of the fire, repeater radios were down, so they had to start calling on cell phones to get a hold of somebody. and. We finally, when they finally got a hold of some people, we got them to get on Alaska and Trinity both dispatched out to us uh, for assistance. Uh, and I was the second one on the scene out here, and it, you know, it was just, it was heartbreaking to sit there and watch your fire station burn, and you can't do anything because you got no water to put on it. You, you there's no way to do anything to stop it. I mean, you just, it's just, it's heartbreaking and sickening because we've lost, basically we've lost everything that we have out here, you know, and we have extremely, extremely limited resources. Uh, we get extremely limited money from our county to help us run this fire department. So, you know, we're, we're really gonna have to start from ground zero from the floor up, and it's just gonna be tough. Uh, what, so what time do y'all think that passerby called that it, you know, saw the it, fire? It had to be right close to midnight. Close to midnight. Um, and, and what time were, um, uh, what time were, did, did On Alaska and Trinity, how, what, what time were they able to get here? You know, I really, I wasn't watching my watch. It, you know, sitting out there watching it, it seemed like it took forever, but I know it didn't. I know they, I know both departments and they both rolled just as hard as they could to get here uh, because that's, what the volunteer fire departments do. I mean, that's what they do for each other too. So, you know, I know it wasn't as near as long as it seemed, but when you're sitting there helpless, it seems like forever. How, what is that feeling of, you know, you're used to being out fighting fires, but your equipment is in the, it was, it was in there, right? It, it was just, I, I was sick. I mean, literally, literally sick because, you know, I'm usually going in, not having to stand by and, and, and look at stuff. And, you know, to just have to sit there and watch, it, it just, it just, I was, I was literally sick watching it. It took a few, a, a couple of hours to get the fire right, right. Before we got it totally under control to where, you know, we could call it, a, you know, wrapping up, uh, it was about two and a half hours. My goodness. You yes, know, what about insurance? No insurance at all. So we're basically, like I said, we're starting from ground zero to, to rebuild, you know. We're just gonna have to, you know, count on our public, you know, to help us. We're gonna have to count on, you know, just any help that we can get anywhere we can get it, you so know, to help us reestablish this department. The building and the vehicles, none of them insured? No, no. Wow. 
with the with the cost of insurance these days, the vehicles had liability insurance to cover anybody else in case they got hurt, in case you know the vehicle was in an accident. But as far as being able to afford full coverage on it uh, and on the building, uh, insurance is so high now. You just with with the limited funds that we have, we could not afford it. How do y'all before this? How how did were y'all able to maintain vehicles, pay for gas, keep going? Uh, help from uh, donations from our public. Uh, we get, like I said, we get a little bit of money from the county every year, but mostly our public uh, helps us keep sustained uh, and keep going because, you know, they want us out here. They know we serve a, an important, you know, purpose being here. I think y'all are definitely one of the most uh, visible local area volunteer fire departments, and so this is just it's pretty tragic. What was it? What what, what was inside the, the y'all station, and, and and what was destroyed? We lost all of our, we lost all four trucks that were in the station. We lost two brush trucks, a rescue truck, and a tanker truck. We lost all of our bunker gear. We lost all of our hose and nozzles. Uh, we just, we basically, we lost everything that, that we had, you know, everything to, for firefighting, we lost, so. Going back, to, when you said that they were trying to, like, dispatch you, was the the, the radio, the, the main radio was in here? Our so repeater. Your, your little radios didn't work? Right, our, our pager is paged off of our repeater that was here at the station, and of course, when it got hot and went, there was no radio communication for us. So this all this whole building is it was destroyed. This building is de is destroyed. It's going to have to be totally rebuilt. What would you like to tell the community? I mean, this is the, probably the bottom that you could, a, a local a volunteer fire department can be. Uh, yes, this is this is the very bottom, and you know, any help that we can receive from anybody, any of our public anywhere, uh, would be just graciously appreciated. Uh, Jason, kind of go. I mean, you know, I know you know you're talking about the high cost of insurance. Uh, there, kind of relates to the fuel too. I mean, your budget. How much of your budget is used up with fuel, especially after preparing fire? Uh, well, we used, you know, we used a tenth of our annual county money just on that bearing fire alone on fuel. You know, we used a tenth of our entire year's money on that. Mm. Fire. So just getting there, and when y'all had to go to go work on hot spots, yeah, feeling oh my goodness, you know, it seems you know, does this really is this a testament to how dry this air, you know, East Texas is right now? This is this this helps to be a testament by all means to how dry it is. Everything is everything is bone dry, and people really really need to pay attention to the fact that it is desperately dry out there and the least little spark from anything can cause a disaster. Destroy a fire department. Now, do y'all have any idea what, what caused this? Um, no, the fire marshal is supposed to be here tomorrow to do an investigation in the morning early um, and they will make a determination on what the actual cause is. Uh, it started, it looked like, you know, I'm sure in the bay because that's where the fire was rolling out of the bay doors when I arrived on the scene. Um, I have an idea possibly where it started, but I want to hear what the fire marshal has to say for sure. You, you don't want to, it all, I mean, you, I know you guys are, y'all are in fires, I mean, what, what is it, can you tell me at all what you think it is and we could always I think, update? I think it started with that, uh, with that 99 Ford brush truck that we had, that looks like that's where the concentrated burn is. Um, how could, without it being, without it starting, how could it? Uh, that was part of the years, I believe, that Ford was having all the recalls on their cruise control and blinker systems because these vehicles were spontaneously combusting with nobody around them in the middle of the night in a garage. And we bought the truck used, so I have no idea if that truck hit that recall and wasn't taken in to be properly fixed or what. But I mean, it, 
From what, from your expertise, when you're looking at it, it seems to be starting from that area. Yes, it did. But we'll definitely make sure when we get the fire marshal's report to update that. Correct. Um, I guess any any last um, you know uh, you know how again how you know how much do, do, uh, as far as dollars do y'all think y'all lost uh, last night? We probably lost right at four hundred thousand dollars total with trucks and building and everything and equipment. Uh, probably right at four hundred thousand dollars. If someone wants to help you guys out, what do they? Who do they need to call? What do they need to? Uh, if they want to help us out, uh, they can get in touch with the fire department out here. Uh, they can call 936-662-2985 or 936-662-2964. Those are both cell phones, and uh, you know that are answered. And anybody that wants to call and, and find out any uh, find out any information or make any donations or anything can get a hold of us that way. Uh, we'll make sure that, that, that that's out there. I, I think I'm, I'm good. You have any more of the questions? Yeah, I'm good. I'm right, good. Thank you so much. Great job. Thank, thank you. Graciously lent us one of their trucks so that we will have a vehicle here uh, to protect our district and territory. Uh, there's, I've had numerous calls from other fire departments um, wanting to know what was needed and said that they were going to start working on trying to figure out what they can get for us and how they can help us. So yes, the help is definitely uh, starting to come in and it's very, very much appreciated. I noticed you've got some of the guys bunker gear. Most of the guys bunker gear was all, all here at the station at the time. Yeah. So basically, your guys have no protective gear right now to go into the there's, there's a few of them that have protective gear that had their personal gear, had their gear with them. But for the vast majority, we've lost all of the all of our bunker gear. No, you had a couple of SCBAs laying in the back of the we, truck there. We lost all of our SCBAs. We have no SCBAs left at all. So we're, we don't have an air pack to go into a structure. If we go in a structure, we'll go in using the old timey fog nozzle, I guess, because we sure don't have an air pack to, to do anything with. What about, uh, I mean, hose, everything? Basically... Yeah, all of our hose burn up. Uh, every, every bit of our hose burn up. We have no hose. Uh, no gear, no air packs, no trucks except for the one that on Alaska, like I said, graciously lent us to use for as long as we needed it, which, like I said, we're extremely appreciative to on Alaska Volunteer Fire Department. What is your name? Jerry Caldwell. Spell your, your name. J-E-R-R-I-C-A-L-D-W-E-L-L. -L. Jerry, you're with the fire department here with first responder? Yes, sir. Tell me a little bit about the department, what, what kind of loss you've got now. We've got a major loss and we're going to work real hard to build it back up so we can go back to serving our community like we did before. Uh, they're our main concern. We want to serve and protect them as much as possible and we're hoping to get it up quick. Tell me a little bit about what you're going to roll with the fire department. I am a first responder. I go out on our medical calls. Um, I take the blood pressure and pulse if needed. I help with giving them oxygen, or we do CPR as well if we need it, uh, until uh, the ambulance gets there and takes over. Make sure that uh, we can get them uh, airlifted if necessary, or whatever t is needed. What's your name? William Wameline. Oh, sorry, what was it? Wa Wa William Wameline. Spell your last name, William. W-A-M-E-L-I-N-G. Tell me a little about uh, your role with the fire department, how long you've been here, and um, what do you think about this loss? I've been on with the department for six years. I left for a year and came back recently. And I'm a firefighter, plus I do the medical. I'm a first responder. Um, this loss is just unbelievable. It's, it hurts. What did you think when you came up today and saw this? I mean, after you, how were you notified last night? Um, I was called by my, on a, my home phone. And what did you think when you got here? It, the words just don't explain it. It's I mean, th this is my home away from home. I, you know, I'm here more most of the time than I am at my own house, so it's hard.